Thanks, Hoya, for the nice introduction, and thanks every, uh, everyone to join this sharing. So I would like to share you with some of the uh, finding and leisure review from our Cullen uh, project. So the, the sharing today will be entitled Genomic Structural Variance and Underappreciated Factor in Human uh, Infertility. So first of all, I would like to introduce some concept regarding the structural variance. So you can appreciate that uh, structural variance is defined as genomic as cytogenomic changes in uh, even though prenatal or the other genetic diagnosis matter apart from any priority. So firstly, uh, cyt uh, structural variance can subgroup into two categories. One is the deletion duplication that we usually call as copy number variance. The other would be uh, the other group we named it as structural re structural rearrangement, which we can uh, usually can call translocation, inversion, and insertion. You can see for the second category, most important things that we know the location and then the composition of the rearrangement. So in the old day, conventional cytogenetics or cytogenomic approaches relying on the gene demanding karyotype analysis, which have been introduced for like six or seven uh, decades, is causing in, uh, efficiency, labor intensity, low throughput, and then you only report the variance that in a resolution is five to 10 megabase, highly relying on the bending level that it generate. And in 20, 21, uh, uh, in 20th century, we know that chromosomal microarray have been introduced because of the higher resolution of detecting micro deletion, micro duplication. And usually in our lab as well as in other lab, like in the one in Zhang Yu Hospital, we usually uh, have a genome-wide coverage of 100 KB for calling uh, uh, deletion duplication. So this is an over, overall view from uh, ACMG statement that acknowledged the method that can be used for current uh, G, uh, SV detection. So you can see that from starting from karyotyping, chromosomal microarray, towards to the application of NGS, the next generation sequencing, as, uh, as well as the long read sequencing. You can appreciate that there is a method named it as low path genome sequencing that uh, like Chao Ye just introduced, it was the, uh, introduced or uh, have been developed in our lab that mainly focus on the application of detecting copy number change. So for, uh, you might ask, what would be the method for the genome sequencing? So in our first paper, landmark paper published in uh, eight years ago, we start to introduce a concept of low-part genome sequencing, which is a uh, low coverage but high throughput genome sequencing method. So regarding what would be the pro, uh, processing uh, pro, uh, for the DNA sequencing, you can see that if you submit a sample that consists of so many cells, uh, you can uh, from the, so, uh, those cells that have a lot of DNA. So when you do the library construction, we need to do a lot of steps before sequencing. So you can see that after DNA extraction, we can uh, obtain the very long DNA as well as the very short DNA. So we need to uh, fragment them into a certain size, let's say 300 to 500 base pair. After that, you can see that for each uh, locus, they will be covered by different uh, the DNA segment from the different cell. So eventually after you perform the sequencing, you can know that we, when we know the ATCG sequence, but when covering the, the locus, the same locus, you covered it by the DNA from different cell. So the concept is that DNA sequencing, let, let's say three times, uh, 30 times genome sequence is not to sequence a DNA to 30 times, but to sequence so many DNA, but covering the same locus in a rough approximately 30 reads or 30 times uh, coverage. So for copy number variance detection, we know that it will aim to identify those regions that have suspected have duplication or suspected have deletion. So the principle is that we, when we generate the reads, uh, reads data, we can map back to the genome. So when we calculate the coverage, we can know that which region is copy number neutral, which region is copy number gain, and the other, uh, which region was copy number loss. So by doing that, 
uh, after a lot of uh, DNA uh, or data processing or adjustment, we can uh, clearly appreciate the constitutional deletion, constitutional duplication, as well as mosaic duplication. But the figures show it here. So uh, in our lab, we usually generate a million, uh, no, no less than 15 million risk pair for the CMV analysis. That is because the, during the uh, 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 simulation, you can see that from the same sample, if we generate 60 million reads, 45, 30, 15, and down to 10 million, the background, uh, background noise become, become larger and larger. So when we have 10 million reads, we can see lots of background signal, which is a false positive signal. So we start to use 15 million reads as the cutoff for the analysis, which equivalent to 0 0.5 times genome-wide coverage for the CMV analysis. So we set the resolution at 50 base uh, KB for the genome-wide setting, but for those regions have homozygous deletion, let's say SEA uh, homozygous deletion, that which is very frequently observed in our population, as well as those one in, uh, have hemizygous deletion. Let's say of a, a male fetus that have a, a deletion in the X chromosome. So for these two category, because in those region we will see epsom of rays aligned to those uh, those window. So we can increase the resolution to 10, 10 KB. So by doing that, by doing a prospective study back to back with CMA, what can we see? So we can appreciate 1.7 percent of increased diagnostic yield mainly contribute by smaller CMV. So the resolution enhanced to be 50 KB did uh, observe some of the smaller CMV that can be, cannot be picked up by standard CMA. And in addition, we also can see some of the uh, mosaic system, which in a lower mosaic level that cannot be picked up by routine CMA. So that was the application for copy number change. But if we talk about the second category of this SV, which is referred to structural rearrangement, we need to know the location. So if we talk about this application, we can't just use low pass genome sequencing. There's a lot of other uh, ap application, but we need to see any, uh, which one is the most cost-effective one. So I would like to bring your attention about there's a method named May pair sequencing. The scope of this analysis is not only focus on copy number variants, but also look into the, uh, have a look at the balanced structural variants, which can be known particularly for those one is in the balanced status. And last but not least, our, uh, we also need to uh, have the function for detection of a region of homozygosity, or we call absent heterozygosity. So by doing that, we can have a complete function to directly replace copy, uh, chromosomal microarray analysis. So what uh, do we mean about main pair library construction? So let me have some diagram to show you. So in usual practice, we, uh, for the CMV analysis, we just need to count the reads number within a certain region or certain being, certain windows, and then compare the one that nearby or in the other chromosome to see whether there's gain or there's a loss. But if we would like to know the location, we'll need to know where, uh, whether there's a new rearrangement. Let's say there was a translocation between the uh, uh, chromosome A and then chromosome B. It will be indicated by aligning the read one and read two to the genome. So some of the reads might align to chromosome A and the other reads from the same DNA align to chromosome B. So that we can suspect that they might have a rearrangement between chromosome A and chromosome B. But the problem is that uh, for human structural variants, a lot of them, uh, or most of them were mediated by uh, repeated uh, repeat element. So by uh, using the, uh, this diagram, you can know that repeated element will prevent uh, or, or inhibit the function of aligning the region with a unique uh, location. So if we have a risk that can originate from, um, from the repeat element, we can't tell whether this risk is aligned to this repeat element or aligned to chromosome B, or it, is, uh, it can be aligned to chromosome C. So, but 
if we enlarge the DNA size to be like three to eight KB, we might uh, get rid of this repeat element then resulting increased sensitivity of this uh, analysis. But the problem is that by using this, uh, the uh, current available uh, NGS platform, we can't just based on the uh, standard library construction to add the adapter and then do the sequencing. We need to have uh, lots of effort to be made to uh, generate a library that the final template is the one that originally from these two end because we would like to read the sequence of read one and read two to represent uh, the, uh, this template will represent the original DNA fragment for the end sequence. So uh, we sequence them into uh, 100 base pair uh, in each two end. But another thing is that for the analytical pipeline, we can just rely on the original uh, karyotyping result to see whether we can uh, identify the structural variance based on the karyotyping uh, indication. Maybe, okay, paratype typing tell you that there's a translocation, there's inversion. But what we need to do is that whether we can do that independently from the karyotyping result, which was very important because sometimes you know that karyotyping is not doable because of some tissue type. Sometimes that even you have the karyotyping result, if the bending level is insufficient, like uh, in prenatal setting, all, we always uh, have the bending level less than 400 bands for the prenatal uh, culture sample. So we can know the original or the M90 by the karyotyping. How can we identify the result if we just relying on the karyotyping result? So we need to do the blind detection optimization. So we develop a robust pipeline to tackle the problem of systematic errors, uh, random errors, as well as the other, uh, the other errors. So by doing that, we uh, in the ten, uh, past 10 years, we have validated this pipeline to, um, uh, in, several, in, in several groups of indication. So I would like to introduce some of the results for your kinds of information. So this is the uh, whole setting, we call it low-pass maple genome sequencing. And in our lab, we also have another name for this assay, we call it COMOSAID, because we would like to sequence the, como, uh, the whole chromosome to look into whether there's a deletion, deprecation, or whether there's a translocation, inversion, insertion. Last but not least, we need to look at the region of SM of heterozygosity or run in homozygosity. And then, in our uh, uh, in, uh, two, uh, one years ago, we also tried to see if it was submitted with chio based uh, sample, let like the uh, uh, parents as well as the uh, proband, whether we can have this low pass setting data set for uh, as a, 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 a foundation to detect the, the paternity. The answer is yes. But I, will, I won't uh, share the result in detail. You can refer to our uh, publication later. So for this whole assay, the DNA input amount will be starting from 500 nanogram to one microgram, depends on the, uh, the sample, uh, the DNA volume that you can obtain. The cost will, will be comparable to CMA. So what would be the power, the additional information that you can see? So let's look at the uh, uh, left figure. So the left figure, you can appreciate this. Uh, this is a case affected by five pi, uh, phi uh, p um, minus uh, syndrome. So you can appreciate there is a constitutional deletion, but in the same case, you can appreciate two deprecation as well. Uh, they uh, come from the same uh, rearrangement. If you only perform copy number uh, analysis, you can't appreciate anymore. But if you perform uh, Kumosik or we say the may pair genome sequencing, what we can see from uh, the analysis result, Firstly, we can know that a, these two uh, deprecation, they are tendon deprecation. But the second one, this one is in a reverse, uh, the, the first one is in a reverse deprecation setting. The second one is in a, uh, uh, sorry, this, the, the, the red one is in a, a reverse setting and then the, the brown one is in a, in a forward setting. And then it resulting in, from uh, inversion as well. 
So we can appreciate deletion, inversion, two uh, types of tangent duplication. We can know that, okay, all of these three, uh, copy number deletion and duplication that come from the same rearrangement event. But you might ask, if I know this location, uh, this com uh, composition, what uh, would be the additional finding or the uh, information that we can uh, use, which whether it's useful or not. So we have uh, other application like PDH application. This is the study that com uh, conducted by Dr. Cao. So uh, I would like to exemplify with one case. This is the case with uh, uh, duplication of DLGAP2 in, uh, involving the exon 3 to exon 6, which is known to be hypoinsufficiency. But if I don't, and I just know this uh, parcel tendon duplication, where I can't make the decision whether this gene is truly uh, disrupted because we don't know the location of this duplication. But if I, uh, uh, the sequencing result turned out to be there is a cryptic segment insert into the gene, uh, insert into the exon uh, region here, and then resulting to, into a, a parcel duplication of this gene. So we know that the gene is truly truncated due to this duplication. So we can make the conclusion that this gene will be truly affected due to this insertion. Then the story will be complete rather than just easier view as we call. So apart from pediatric, how about prenatal? So this is the case that originally in the uh, uh, in the CMA, we can know that there's more than one megabase deprecation, de novo deprecation in the fetus, but there's no only disease causing gene. So we can make the uh, uh, conclusion at all. But if you go with the chromosome, we know that this is truly an insertion. So this deprecation of chromosome 13 is insert into the chromosome 2. So what would be the consequence? This is the insertion site in chromosome two. The downstream of this insertion site with the gene GLI2, which is known to be heteroinsufficiency, caused to uh, cause holoposensatellite. So, uh, but doing the RNA seq for the culture, the amyloidic fluid with the uh, gestational match to control, you can see that the gene have significantly redu uh, reduction of expression, which indicate that this gene might, the dysregulation might be resulting from this insertion. So because it's hyperinsufficiency, and then the uh, phenotype is quite my, matching with the uh, report, then we might issue a likely patient rather than the VUS report. So by knowing the location, we can resolve some of the uh, result that originally we, we can't tackle by using CMA alone. So I, I show some of the application in the, uh, in the prenatal and the pediatric application. So how about the application of reproductive medicine? As we all know that recurrent miscarriage is the group with, uh, with enrichment of balance translocation. So by, in the old day, by using keratyping, we know that three to 5% of the case uh, will suffer, uh, one of the couple will, have, will be the carrier of balance translocation. Uh, and then uh, this carrier might always asymptomatic, so they might not be picked up uh, if they don't go to the genetic clinic later on. But for this case, uh, for this couple, uh, over 40% of the case, uh, oh, uh, for each case, over 49% of the chance will still miscarriage in subsequent pregnancy. So for this case, so, sorry, sometimes you, uh, uh, in, it depends on the location of the breakpoint as well as the chromosome have been involved. It, uh, it might uh, generate normal upstream, balanced upstream, but most likely they will also generate unbalanced translocation as well, which will lead to uh, lethal uh, embryo as well as lethal pre, uh, fetus. So uh, there's a lesson that we learned from our previous study that worked with a China team from uh, Shandong University. We applied this approach in more than 1,000 couple with miscarriage as well, and all, all, uh, each partner have the current having result available. We can know that the uh, diagnostic yield of balance translocation inversion having a uh, significant increase, but what would be another uh, 
another condition that the additional finding would be useful. So this is a case that original for the karyotyping, it pick up three chromosome. Chromosome one to 13, they have a structural rearrangement that involving uh, the, the long arm of one, a long arm of two, as well as the long arm of 13. But after sequencing, we know that one, uh, chromosome 18 was involved in this structural rearrangement as well. The, this in, uh, additional information would tell us that if it is happened with a four chromosome structural rearrangement, the rate of pro embryo will be significantly reduced compared to the one with three uh, chromosome. So whether this uh, this couple can uh, can pursue natural pregnancy by themselves or we have additional method can be applied. So for those who uh, pursue uh, next pregnancy by natural conception, 50% of them uh, still go with miscarriage. But if we go with IVF plus PGT, then the miscarriage rate will, can have a reduction of tenfold. So that means if we once have the uh, finding from the uh, uh, low pass genome sequencing, we might have uh, additional method for the management. And then, uh, because uh, today we would like to cover the uh, uh, the topic about infertility. So for that, my neck, uh, my following presentation, I will mainly uh, talk about the application in male and female infertility. So as we know that uh, the currently the uh, the incidence of infertility have been significantly increased because of the. Uh, the pregnancy rate have been uh, postponed as well. So by looking at the genomic contribution as well as the other contribution like the structural anomalous for the male or female it themselves, uh, if roughly approximately equal contribution for, for the male side as well as the female side. So today I would like to exemplify with two group of patients that suffer the infertility issue. So the first group of the uh, uh, patient will be male infertility, mainly contributed by non-obstructive azospermia and uh, severe oligospermia. And then the second uh, group of patient will be premature ovarian insufficiency. So let's go with the uh, male infertility first. As we know that uh, the heat, uh, the incidence of male infertility have been significantly increased. And then uh, the causes may heterogeneous. It can be caused by the con uh, congenital or acquired uh, urogenic abnormality as well as some genetic factor. So in a uh, current genetic setting for the male infertility uh, genetic uh, workup, we would apply Karyotyping analysis as well as Y micro deletion for for the cup, uh, for the patient that suffer uh, non obstructive angiospermia as well as severe oligospermia. For the application of uh, Y micro deletion is because we need to look at the region of ACF A B C. Look whether they have uh, have a significant deletion of A or A uh, B plus C together, which can explain the reason of angiospermia. But for the application of uh, uh, karyotyping, you, uh, you have two detection scope. One is to look at the aneuploidy. So what, uh, we would like to look at those cases that have additional X chromosome uh, 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 affected by the, by the, uh, by the uh, patient itself. But the other scope is to look at chromosomal structural rearrangement. It mainly refers to karyotypical uh, translocation. So, but you might ask why a translocation would cause, uh, will cause the consequence of male infertility. In, 20, uh, in, in the early 20, uh, 2000s, uh, some of the researchers start to look at the, the uh, my, myotic, uh, uh, my, myotic uh, cell for the, uh, during the mouses. But when we can see that, because it's a, a balanced translocation involved two uh, chromosomes, it might promote, a, uh, it might form a contravalence with uh, between the two uh, autosomal chromosome. In at the same time, because the male have X and Y bivalence, 
So this contravalence and then the bivalence might form a complex. So it should lead to a difficulty of cell division. So they would like to use this concept to explain the reason of male infertility. But later on, we would like to see whether molecular uh, level, we can have some additional explanation. So first of all, I would like to introduce a concept. So in the old day, we know that deletion, duplication cause the disease because they involve heteroinsufficient or triple sensitivity gene. But we know that DNA is not in a linear way in a cell, it's in a 3D form, uh, form a 3D form of the, uh, the in, in the cell, they condense of different folding uh, composition. So we, it, there's a concept about topologically associated domain. So the, we can see there's a, that they are, there were two domains, one is A and the other is B. It, uh, let's make the story simple. So we know that when the gene gonna express, they need to have regulator element. So for G, G2, originally it locked off uh, 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 regulated element, let's say, uh, 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 for example, enhancer. So it might not express. But due to this inversion, you will activate an expression uh, by uh, relocate the enhancer. So the G2 will adopt the enhancer, so it start to express. So this is the same story for uh, the adoption of uh, enhancer. This is a case uh, published by Professor Simphil Modern in uh, Harvard uh, Medical School. Uh, this is the case that uh, the male is suffers severe oligospermia and also the balance translocation was happening in chromosome 20 and chromosome 22. And the uh, take home message is that there's a gene which is located 1.5 uh, megabase away from the breakpoint junction adopt two enhancer 7.1 megabase away from the breakpoint junction in chromosome 22 as well. So the uh, end up story is that overexpression of this gene will disrupt the structural integrity of the sinopertinomy co uh, complex and uh, explain the ma uh, male infertility story. So that means that maybe in molecular manner, we might explain the result as well. There are some increasing data showing that cryptic copy number change also leading to infertility. So this is the uh, example that in a 46 axis testicular disorder of sexual development. So uh, you, as we know that 46 XX case all, uh, uh, is dedicated to be a female, but when, uh, for some of the case, they have testicular uh, uh, organ uh, have been formed. So uh, some of the case that when they do the analysis, they know that because of deletion have involving the regulator element in SOX9. So when SOX9 turn on, then the, the uh, uh, it will, when the bipotential bi gonad have the SOX9 turn on, then the testicular organ will be formed. Uh, so that means that could be, copy number change or cryptic structural variance is also very important, but those one are not be appreciated by conventional uh, karyotyping analysis. So for us, we would like to look by uh, using the low pass genome sequencing method to look at two group of the patient. The first group of the patient is the one that already known with karyotypical abnormality. But the second one is the one that without a positive finding from cytogenetics and then one micro deletion. So let's look at the first group. So the first group, uh, we recruit six subjects that have suffered uh, infertility. Uh, you can see severe oligospermia, uh, isospermia, and then have the karyotyping finding. So the first one is a simple translocation. The second one have two independent set of balance translocation. For the uh, third one, uh, uh, as well as the fourth one, they are three ways, they are affected by three ways balance translocation. The fourth one is uh, insertion from chromosome two insert to chromosome six. The last one is a complex rearrangement. I will uh, 
I will exemplify using one case later. So the result is that additional rearrangement have been identified in five uh, over six cases. So mo majority of the case have additional structural rearrangement appreciate and a total of 48 rearrangement were identified. That means uh, the complex sequence complexity is far away uh, higher than what we expect. So it disrupts the uh, gene as well as the topologically associated domain. So this is the, the case that the, the case six, which uh, is most complex. I would like to use it for demonstration. So this is the case that have the, uh, have, the uh, have chromosome three fragment into 22 fragment. Some of them have been deleted. Some of them have residues in the chromosome three but some of them, uh, um, two part of them were inserted into chromosome 4 and chromosome 20. But the important story is that TV 50, uh, 63 have been disrupted, which is known to be haploinsufficiency. And some of the gene that nearby the breakpoint junction also known to be play an important role during the experimental genesis. In addition, for all cases that we also, uh, for all six cases, we also go with genome sequencing. For this case, we also identify a pair of uh, uh, point mutation in the gene of DNA H1, DNA H1 is, which is likely to be a compounded heterozygosity. So this gene is known to cause cilia, uh, uh, cilia dysfunction as well as fermentive failure 18. So taking together gene disruption as well as point mutation might play a role uh, together to cause male infertility. So in summary for this application, we found that direct disruption or potential dysregulation might explain the result. And some of the cases have dual diagnosis. And this second study for male infertility application, we select uh, 101 cases that uh, uh, 63 of them uh, suffer non obstructive azospermia and then left, uh, the uh, left, uh, the left over 38 cases suffer severe oligospermia. So, uh, because this is, uh, we, we already known, uh, have the result for the 1,077. A uh, couple that originally have miscarriage uh, history. So we can use them as the, the background to see whether some of the variants have been exist in the population and then can be filled out. Another thing is that we have the, uh, we don't, we, we only use the lab over DNA for the analysis. So we don't have the uh, RNA to pursue further investigation. So we use our uh, uh, RNA seq data set that curated from human fetal or postnatal testicular development adult germ cell to support our finding. So the, the result comes out to be over 101 case. We have 12 case uh, can have a clinical significant variance identified. I will have some case illustrate to illustrate. So this is a case that uh, have NOA, the non obstructive azospermia. Uh, I, 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 uh, sorry, I didn't remark that this case is also a case with small testers. So we found there's 1.1 megabase hemizygous deletion involved gene MAGEA gene family, CSAG gene family, as well as FATU1 gene. So what would be the function for those genes? So MAGEA gene cluster is crucial to maintain the normal testicular size. So it makes sense because this case have small, uh, very small testers. And uh, the protein of FATE1 is known to control the earlier testicular differentiation and cell proliferation. Last but not least, depletion of CSAG disrupt the uh, centrosome, which uh, is known to lead to multipolar sp spindle during the mitosis. So we know that Central cell defect is known to result in XC failure, but this for this case we don't didn't have the for after follow up we don't know 
uh, the, the uh, couple didn't pursue IVF pregnancy. So we don't know whether uh, there will be a possibility of exit failure. But knowing this information is very crucial to let the couple know that if they go with IVF pregnancy, whether the exit will failure. So I just told you that we also look at those uh, data set that, that like our uh, previous publication, the online database. We can know that some of the gene is on, uh, low, uh, expressed in all cell type, including a primordial germ cell as well as the toxic cell. But some of the gene will only express in the uh, one of the tissue type. And also look at the human protein atlas. You can know that uh, like FATT1, CSAG, they are specifically expressed in sperm, uh, spermatic, uh, spermatics. So which is indicating uh, is important. They are quite important for the spermatogenesis. This is uh, the second case suffer uh, severe oligospermia. We found that a segment, uh, the size of which is only 53 KB insert into the DMRT1 gene, resulting into uh, a very tiny duplication uh, involving the exon 4 of DMRT1. So the gene will end up to be gene truncation. And we know that this is the gene that uh, have a high expression in the stolic cell, primordial germ cell, uh, starting from the uh, fetal stage as well. Uh, and then it's also important and specifically expressed in the spermatogonia. So uh, a, this finding might be very uh, useful to indicate or to explain the, the result of spermental, uh, uh, oligo, oligo, uh, severe oligospermia. Uh, so in summary, we found that uh, uh, roughly 12% of the case have lively patient finding. And then some of the case might have uh, additional information regarding failure of the ICSI, uh, which is important for the counseling. So apart from male fertility, I will uh, have uh, talk about a little bit of premature ovarian insufficiency. So as we all know that uh, for the causes of female infertility, they are uh, quite diverse and also quite heterogeneous. And also sometimes it's quite related to the age. So we can see these two figures. For the men, uh, the relative uh, fertile rate is not uh, significantly, uh, uh, is not significant, uh, it, you know, significantly changing during the age expand, but for the female, we did see a significant job after uh, 30 years old. Also, the female egg count also will significantly reduce uh, uh, during the age expense. So uh, today I will cover uh, one particular uh, disease, uh, which is uh, of, uh, firstly defined as premature ovarian failure. And then now they will use a new name of premature as new premature ovarian insufficiency. And you, you know that uh, you, can, you can refer to the guideline that uh, uh, the criteria will be uh, uh, showing here. Uh, I won't spend uh, in, uh, so much time in the detail, but what uh, will be the take-home message, message is that when the instant is significantly increase when the uh, increase and uh, when the maternal age increase. So you can see that when the, uh, the female age is less than 25, then we can find one in 10 uh, thousand. But if we uh, set the range increase to be uh, increased to uh, 35 to 40, then uh, the uh, instant will increase to, to uh, one in 100. So what would be the underlying genetic causes for the POI? As we know that currently we use karyotyping, uh, uh, karyotyping, uh, fat jacks as well as the other uh, result, uh, the other assay to ex explore the finding. But the uh, importance that 80, uh, on, only, 80, uh, only 80 known gene is related to the ovarian development. And then they cause infertility through the known pathway of PI3K, AKT, for, uh, FOX3A, um, MTOF as a hippo pathway. So you can see, uh, 
one typical geno uh, genomic uh, contribution will be the Chen syndrome. So uh, we know that Chen uh, syndrome uh, is affected by a loss of one sex chromosome. So for this, uh, some of them can be observed in the pre uh, in the prenatal stage, and some of them can develop later. But most of them will suffer uh, uh, infertility issue. So uh, premature ovarian insufficiency will mainly caused by uh, these kinds of uh, syndrome. But the secondly, uh, there was known that fragile X and uh, is also related to the POI because the RNA gain of function that uh, is toxic is toxic to the uh, uh, result. But today I would like to introduce a, a mechanism that uh, caused by structural virus. You can see this is a paper published in 1990. They summarized those cases with uh, violent translocation involving chromosome X as, and, and, and the, uh, other chromosome in autosomal chromosome. And then when they doing the uh, comparison, you can see the significant increase of the uh, case uh, in POI have the breakpoint uh, junction that located in two region. One is XQ13 to Q21. The other is XQ23 to Q25. And when we, then they're doing the fish, because at that day, they don't have a, a sequencing method available. They have narrowed down into two region. But later on, when they have the sequencing method, they uh, have a claim that the, these two region might be merged together. So there, there would not be a gap in the middle. So this, is, this whole region might have some factor that contribute to the uh, uh, premature ovarian insufficiency uh, itself. So why we would like to introduce this model today is because firstly, POI is observed in 50 of the translocation affecting chromosome X. And then chromosome X itself represents 13% of the POI cases. You might ask, okay, only 13%. But the reality, reality is that currently we know that only around 20% of the POI cases can have a genetic finding. And then two critical regions, but we might merge them together to be one critical region starting from XQ13 to XQ27. And then one very important mechanism is that we saw that uh, uh, for female, for those uh, case with balanced uh, chromosomal trans trans uh, translocation between chromosome X and autosomal chromosome, there's a roughly 100% in activation of the normal chromosome X. So that means only the affected gene in the, uh, only the gene that in the affected chromosome will express. But it's, it's the, the, the scenario is different in, uh, in the case with unbalanced uh, translocation involving chromosome X, which will typically express the, no, uh, the, the uh, uh, gene located in the normal chromosome X. So why we consider this model is very important. Firstly, I just told you that only the uh, uh, gene that located in the affected allele will be, uh, will, will might, might be explained the phenotype. They, uh, there are three uh, hypotheses have been proposed. One is gene direct disruption. Second, meiosis uh, error. And thirdly, position effect. For the meiosis arrest, we can, uh, it might not be a very proper uh, model because why, why we can't see those cases where autosomal translocation might cause pre, uh, POI uh, quite frequently. So we might use the gene disruption or position effect to explain the result. So gene disruption have been reported in some of the literature. So uh, in the old day, they have uh, one paper discussed two gene that is directly disrupted by the breakpoint junction. One is POF1B, the other is DACH2. Uh, both of them are located very closely. And, but the reality is that when disruption happened in POF1B, they found there's still expression of this gene in the particular case. And they consider it might escape of inactivation in the normal chromosome X for this gene. 
But in the other case that they didn't detect any expression in the DASH2, that explained the, uh, the inactive chromosome X might not have a supplement of expression for this gene. So they consider might be disruption sometimes can, can or sometimes cannot express, ex, explain the phenotype. So there's increased study that uh, using RNA-seq to see whether they, uh, there are some uh, common variants or common pattern can explain the phenotype. But for this study they uh, published last year, they didn't find that uh, a significant gene expression. But one thing is that they used the B cell uh, uh, cell line. So only one cell type alone might not be able to uh, explain the finding. I will tell you why. So our hy hypothesis is that we might find any normal or novel gene that in, uh, located in this region can explain the phenotype by using this model. So this study was just uh, uh, was supported by our recent uh, GIF application. So I would like to exemplify by using one case. So this is a case that have a, a de novo violent translocation be, between chromosome X and chromosome 12. And you can see that, oh, sorry, this is a shift. This should be indicate this, uh, this, uh, this blue line uh, is a breakpoint junction of the gene, the case in the chromosome X. No gene was disrupted in chromosome X, but we can see that the gene at DACH2, uh, PL, uh, POF1B, they are located located nearby. So in the very beginning, we suspect might be these two genes are uh, dysregulated by the, by the breakpoint junction to explain the phenotype. But unfortunately, they are not expressed. And then the story that I just uh, uh, described that the gene disruption itself might not explain the phenotype at all. So uh, we need to focus or take a look at the other gene nearby this breakpoint junction. So firstly, we would like to uh, pursue genome sequencing to see which, because it's a novel, but we need to know what, uh, which chromosome, uh, uh, the affected chromosome was from the father or from the inherited from the mother. By looking at the SNP and by using the gap PCR for the amplification, we know that this chromosome is inherit, inherited from the father. So one thing is that, okay, the inherited uh, affected chromosome is from the father, and then the mother uh, uh, inherited chromosome from the mother would be a normal chromosome X. So by looking at uh, at the uh, in in, uh, in in activation assay result, we can know that the mother, the uh, normal chromosome X, the maternal allele chromosome X, was one hundred percent inactivate. So uh, this gene, we later on uh, pursue uh, single cell sequencing. We first, uh, uh, in the very beginning, we missed this uh, gene expression, but when we look at the in detail uh, by using single cell analysis, we know that the gene uh, KLHL4 has specifically expressed in the case, and then also specifically expressing the T cell stem cell. And this gene is highly expressing ovary, but there's no promoter in the B cell. So it explains why we can't see B cell have expression of this gene. And when we're looking at to the T cell, we saw promoter in the, in the case. So we, the hypothesis is that maybe in the T cell, we have the promoter and then we adopt some of the enhancer in the, in the chromosome 12 to activate the expression of this gene in the, uh, in the T cell. So later on, we conduct a chromatin uh, assay to see whether we can see some adoptive uh, uh, defect. So you can see that by virtual 4C, we can see you, if we set a, a, this gene as the target, we can see it in, uh, the chromatin uh, content having significantly increased. And then we also perform uh, RNA analysis as well as the SNP analysis to, together. The result turned out to be the expression, the gene expression is from the paternal allele. So confirm that this uh, gene expression is specifically because of the translocation. And then we will say, 
whether this uh, overexpression of KL HL4 will activate or check, take a role in the POI related pathway. The answer is yes. You can see the mTOR pathway have been significantly increased. So end of story is that this gene overexpression have uh have turned on the POI related pathway. So uh here this is an ongoing project and we're also recruiting other cases. We can see that some of the gene that we have the, the same pattern find, uh, identified. So in summary, genomic structural variants, including deletion, duplication, translocation, inversion, insertion are underappreciated by conventional method and become detectable by uh, main pair genome sequencing or long read sequencing. And some of the SV are a causative factor to infertility through the mechanism of gene disruption or gene dysregulation. Uh, last but not least, I would like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Professor Choi, Professor Leung, as well as our collaborator. And then I'm an editor of several journals. If you are very interested to submit the paper, please contact me. I'm sorry that uh, uh, this, uh, the, the, uh, the laptop have been running out of the power. I will see any, any method that I can use to answer a question. So thank, thank you so much for listening.